All right, all right, everybody. Welcome back. Last session, you all officially set out from Port Nyanzaru for the first time, venturing out into the wilderness on your own. Although you did decide that it would be safer and smarter to stay along the coastline and venture up from Port Nyanzaru northward toward Fort Bolurian, using the beach as a kind of guide as you went up. Um, you encountered some strange sights. The jungle and its beaches are, of course, no stranger to the unusual. But you all eventually did make your way to Fort Bellurian. Along the way, meeting up with a man who had no love for the Flaming Fist and could sense that the group of you also shared no kindred towards them. He asked you all if you would be so kind as to create some sort of distraction while you were inside. He said that he would wait until the end of the first day of your visit to give you ample opportunity to do this if you so decided. He said that, of course, no hard feelings if you decide not to do this thing. But if you were to, he would reward you in two different ways. First, he would pay for your charter of exploration, seeing to it that you all received one free of charge before you left the fort. Secondly, he offered to introduce you to what he called two of the best guides in all of Schultz upon your return to Port Nyanzaru. Not offering to cover their fee, but offering to introduce you to them, saying that these guides could not be acquired through the normal channels, but that they were in fact the best in the the best in the peninsula. So you all told him that you would take this into consideration, not committing to it one way or the other, and then made your way towards the fort. When you arrived there, you did find the place to be a bustle with activity. Um, traitors, jousting, very <laughs> hundreds of soldiers, and many other sights to see. You did decide that it would be wise to trade in your valuables, although having doing be tr attempting to do so before having acquired a charter of exploration, the document that allows you to gain the right to keep some of the treasure that the Flaming Fist has laid claim to in this entire peninsula. Without doing this, several guards approached you all and attempted to take everything that you had gotten. Although some antics by our goblin companion entertained them so that they decided to allow you to keep your gold simply with a firm warning to not come back and trade here again before paying the proper dues to the Flaming Fist. Shortly after this altercation, as the soldiers were walking away, an individual approached you all, a commander of the Flaming Fist here at Fort Belurian. Mm. She came to you all and said that there was a meeting with somebody quite important. Major Liara Porter, the commander of the Flaming Fist here, had requested an audience with you all. That is where we pick up now. So, we are going to put everybody back here onto the Fort Bellurian map. Mm. Make sure lighting is set up. No visibility. I can fix that right now. You all have a black screen, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Getting that fixed right now. Weird.
Sorry, our roll 20 is shit in the bed. It's okay. All right, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and have to do this then. Ignore everything you see on the right-hand side of the screen. Nothing over there to see. A whole lot of nothing. Okay, so, Castellan Kruta has approached you all. The tall, armored woman who greeted you all at the gate, no-nonsense style about her, marches up to you, stands at attention behind you, and informs you all that Captain Liara Porter, or Major Liara Porter, I should say, would like an audience with you all. She turns and walks away before waiting to see how you all respond. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Uh, I assume we'll follow behind her. I don't think we can really say no to this. Yeah. yeah. As much as I'd like to. We're going. Okay. So, she leads you all towards the inner bailey. The large, I would say fort within a fort, but it's mostly made of straw, um, local wood, and things like that. But she does lead you all inside. Mm. So, now you all can look over here. <laughs> so, she leads you into the inner bailey. And as you all enter in, she leads you past... Um, dinosaur pens, barracks, dining halls, and other such things. Are we able to get a look at the dinosaur pens and, like, how they're closed as we go by? Sure. Make a quick perception check. Love it. As quickly as I can open this. Okay, here we go. 11. Okay, so as you pass by, it's not much different than within how people would keep horses and other such animals. You can't really gather too much of the details. You can see that there is um, several young handlers in there, stable boys basically, being ordered about by one gruff-looking Chilton. Okay. I'm going to kind of nudge Salazar a little bit, just a little, little, little elbow, like, <laughs> you know what's up. Noted. <laughs> Okay. We'll work on this. <laughs> They're low to the ground. No one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody listens to us. <laughs> oh, All right. So, Mossrat's going to ride one of those, right? Or we're certainly going to do something with those. There's a bunch of Hadrosaurs, some Deinonychus in there. Um, Deinonychus, you say? Deinonychus. Deinonokai. Several of them. <laughs> yeah. Hank knows how this is gonna end. <laughs> Already sick of us. We've been here for ten minutes. <laughs> so, the Castellan leads sure. you through the Bailey and into a large gathering hall. It doesn't seem to be a dining hall or anything like that. This is more of like a briefing room. And seated at one of the tables is a woman into her probably early 50s or so. She's got quite a bit of gray going through her hair. She is fully armored and armed, and those of you that have, all of you have spent enough time in Chult to realize that this must be dramatically uncomfortable, but she doesn't seem to mind in the slightest. The Castellan leads you all in, does a quick two attention as she enters into the room behind you all, and says, Commander, these are the ones from the mainland that you wish to see. And this woman stands up and completely ignoring whatever discomfort she may be in, it's completely unnoticeable as she gets up and strides over to you. She says, Welcome adventures. How has your journey to Cholt been so far? Uh, very uh, fulfilling. Jingle, jingle, jingle. She kind of raises an eyebrow and looks up towards the Castellan, who just kind of stands there. I bet there's a story behind that. Please, have a seat. And she walks over towards one of the tables and sits down and has some maps and things like that laid out in front of her. She says, do you, do you all sit down or do you remain standing? 
Take a seat. I think Ma Moss Rot would just sit on the floor. <laughs> okay. Uh, I assume we'll take a seat. Malicious compliance. <laughs> so, Commander Porter barely even seems to notice, and she looks up towards the castellan and says, You may go about your duties, Commander. And she gives a curt nod, and Castellan Gruda walks out the room. Now, they are Porter sits down, she says, I'm not sure if you all are aware of our position here, but we have landed on these shores with full support of the Lord's Alliance, the Emerald Enclave, and several other Faerunian organizations. I'm sure you've all heard many uncouth rumors about us, but we are simply trying to maintain our operations here and make sure that we do our part to make sure that any Faerunian assets arrive back home safely. Now, I am a pragmatist. I see adventures, those that are here looking to do good and looking to earn coin, and I, of course, see opportunity. I have several lucrative opportunities for you all, if you'd be like, if you are so inclined to hear them. A few jobs that I need done around here that I simply don't have the resources to do myself. You would be well paid, and as a token of gratitude, I would be more than happy to grant you all a full charter of exploration for doing any one of these tasks that I have available for you. A full charter would grant you full rights to any and all treasure that you find on the peninsula. It would grant you freedom from any harassment from some of my more zealous patrolmen. And it'll provide you with the ability to hire any of my people that you see fit to do. And What's we the don't... catch? Yeah, we don't have to give any of our our findings back None. to you. The catch, my friend, is that these jobs are extremely dangerous. I simply do not have the resources to send my men out, the best ones that it would require to do these tasks, and risk losing them. You all, I have no stake in. I do not care if you go out there and die. Aww. Why do I get the impression that we're not the first people you've given this pitch to? It's because you're not. I do this for every promising group that comes through these lands, especially those that have the fourth knowledge to come here and apply for a charter of exploration. I just kind of look at a seam a little bit like, oh yeah, that was totally him. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we really have a choice of whether we want to come here and get one. Well, everyone has a choice, especially in a land as wild as this. You could have avoided us. It's not impossible to do. My men trudge through the jungles fully armored and on a horseback. At least, some of them do. Others have acclimated more efficiently to their new environment, but, again... The fact that you came here means that you wish to operate within the bounds of legality. And if you would like to operate freely within those bounds, I am simply offering you the opportunity to do so. Ross is going to kind of look up at a seam. <laughs> what would any of these chores that you have mentioned entail? Well, there are two that I currently have that I need doing that I simply do not wish to expend any of my own resources on. She looks down at some paperwork, goes through it all. She pulls out one report and she says, there's been rumors of massive bipedal humanoids. She turns, she ups her eyebrow. Giants roaming through this jungle. Of course, this is preposterous. There are no giants in Schultz. This is far, far, far from their native stomping grounds, and so if their oh, presence... Heard them. So you have. Have you seen them? Mm, no. No, but I'm pretty sure I heard one the one night. She nods. She says, well, it's certainly not out of their own possibility that there are giants romping around in the jungles of Chult. If they are in fact here, before I can send any official report back to the mainland, I need proof. I need hard evidence viewed with my own eyes that they are out there. 
If this is the case, something vital, something incredibly important must have driven them here. The task I would set to you is quite simple. Find these giants, bring me evidence of their arrival here, and if you can, bring me evidence of what they're up to. The simple evidence of their presence is enough to earn you your full charter. If you are to bring me evidence of what they are doing here, any concrete proof of what their intentions are in Schultz, then I would be inclined to sweeten the pot further. Second. How much are you talking about? Or we have come into possession of quite the collection of items, tools, other such things that people such as yourselves seem to value quite highly. I would be willing to allow you to take some of these if you can find out what the giants are up to and bring me proof of what it is that they intend to do here. How hard can it be to find a giant? Indeed. What are the other tasks you have? There is a bay on the southern side of the peninsula. A bay that, until recently, had proven to be rather... Well, boring. Not much going on there, not much to gather. But one of my recent expeditions took sail to, the, to this bay, Shiku Bay, on the southern portion of the peninsula. You Went to Shiku Bay. Was that? Yes, sorry, yes, absolutely. Here, okay. I will drop your player map. Um, hmm. Rot is going to, like, sit on the table so she can see better. So this map is crudely drawn at best. It is not nearly as detailed as yours. Your map is miles oh, away superior to what Liara Porter is using. We don't talk about our map, though, right? Correct. Right. Moss so. literally covers her map. <laughs> Shiku Bay is down here, all the way to the southwest of the peninsula. She says that the last expedition she sent there was almost nearly entirely destroyed. Reports came through Sending Stone and were brief and concerning, would be the word she would use. She says that she intends to set up another expedition to the bay. One of her ships will be taken out from the Belurian docks tomorrow. If you all wish to accompany them, collect a one-week reconnaissance of a, of a village that they discovered there, a village known as Shiku Village. Report back what you found, and that's it. Interesting. She says that she would allow you all passage on one of her ships that is leaving for the bay, free of charge. And again, this would earn you a full charter. And if you bring back something promising, something more than what she would expect, again, she is a pragmatist. You don't have to worry. If it is valuable enough, she will up the ante. And once again, if you bring back enough, she will sweeten the pot beyond the full charter. Either way, the full charter will be granted your, to you. Were your men able to have any clues to what sort of trouble they ran into? She uh, goes through some more paperwork and pulls out a transcript. She says, <clears throat> Oh dear gods, what is that? Oh no. Incoherent screaming. She folds it. Puts it away. Same size, closes his little book that he was about to write in and goes, well, that was excellent helpful. Concerning. But the Flaming Fist is actively attempting to chart, map, and otherwise tame this wild land. And one of our first orders is to work inward from the coasts. Shiku Bay and the village of Shiku have proven problematic. We could simply find out what it is that we're dealing with there. It would be much more equipped to handle it and explore into the mountains. Do we know what sort of people live in this village? 
unknown. You would need to speak to the locals. Thirdly, the Flaming Fist is waging an ongoing battle against the undead that plague this land. This is a far easier job, although I simply, I unfortunately cannot provide you with a full charter for completing this task, but I can pay you well. For every ghoul head that you bring to this camp, I will pay you 50 gold. How much for Hasim? She kind of raises her eyebrow and looks at Hasim. Something I should I know about. I can assure you that I am no ghoul or any ghoul, vampire, or creature such as that. Aww. She nods and closes her eyes and concentrates for a moment. No, no you are not. You are something else. I feel you shall find a strange kinship in these lands. Know of any spots as of now that you're having trouble with dead? She gestures all around her. She says that if it is a hunt that you intend, the guides Kuwasha and his Veggie Pygmy companion are currently in the fort. They have an especially fiery hatred for the undead. If it is coin for the heads of ghouls that you seek, then perhaps they can assist you in showing you the best hunting grounds. I mean, I don't like zombies at all, but... Um... Ghouls. Specifically ghouls. More hardy, intelligent, and cunning than simple zombies. Yeah, maybe not then. They're far more deadly, that's what... But, uh... And she nods, Frankly, and she says, in the would... why I intend to pay so handsomely for their heads, especially those that you find near the camp. But do we also need to go ahead and purchase a charter of our own until we complete one of these tasks? If you do agree to, to either track down the giants or head to Shiku Bay, I will grant you a regular charter in the meantime. When you return to me, it will be upgraded to a full charter. Understandable. I have a moment to uh, converse with my comrades. Of course. Take your time. I will be here until dawn, until sixth bell. Six p.m. She will be here. My. She goes okay. back to her work. You all are dismissed. Let's go take a walk and talk. My, as they, uh, where do we want to walk to? Like through the markets and stuff? Maybe by the dinosaur pens. Hmm. A little chaos while we talk it out. <laughs> So, I will say this probably is the quickest, most effective way of having the least issues with the local authorities. I, mean, I yeah. still don't like them. Oh no, we don't have to like I them. I don't either, but quite frank, but quite frankly, well. My personal perspective in the grand scheme of things, they are rather immaterial. Assuming this I agree. does not result in my death or destruction, well, thankfully I'm probably will out out exist their organization. Having them on our side is beneficial to us. Or at least not having them directly oppose us. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I still just kind of want to set the dinosaurs loose for good measure, though. Oh, I think so, and then we get on a boat for a week. Yeah, like, we can just double down on this deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, however, well... We just don't get caught. Whatso whatsoever you decide to do as far as unleashing chaos in here, that is... 
well and good, but... As for me, I... Are prefer However, I would also recommend that if we are taking up a charter from the leader of this fort, she was able to sense that there was something non-human about me. Some of those with various forms of divine magics can ferret out serpents and lies with ease. True. I won't, I won't lie. I'm just hilariously clumsy. <laughs> that is a just a couple drinks, and that's enough chaos already. That is just a word of caution. If this is something you all desire to tend to. Well, regardless, which, which, assuming we accept one of these. The most immediate one would either be an investigation of the bay or an attempt to pursue the, uh, well, giant humanoids. I mean, I think it's too good of a deal to say no to. Realistically, they're not going to disappear. These guys aren't going anywhere. Regardless no. of what they might be up to, it's going to be a long time before they're gone. So I think taking the deal and getting a free pass is going to be our best bet. Yes. Which one of these two we desire to go on? I don't want to get stuck. Battery 70%. Oh, let's go on a boat. So, boat trip initially. And we can, of course, keep the others in mind as far as for... The boat the was the only one that seemed like it was on a timetable, like it's leaving tomorrow. Yes. It's leaving tomorrow. It's also going to be like a two-week... Trip, though. Yes, so a one week reconnaissance, and before that, let me check boat speed real quick. Just throwing that out there, we're signing up for working for them for about two weeks, if not more. Well, yeah, well, but also realistically speaking, realistically speaking, most of it is going to be at sea. No, I, I, you know, I'm just pointing out that and the time. Part, oh. And part of me also thinks if we gain, we may be able to gain some information from said village about this, about Jolt, potentially the origin of this curse we are striving to undo. That is a good point. Because we're going to be on the opposite end of the island where it has not been as thoroughly explored as this side. Ruthie, what are you choking on? And here? if we help them make a camp there that gives us a good point 16 six, 16 days there 7 at the site 16 back it's a month and a half we, we're going to be signing up for but by the time we get back they'll forget we, we set the dinosaurs loose you're right but also bear in mind, if we are successful in this, we are not going to need the promised bit of exploration. Moss just kind of flops on the ground like, just let oh, me just free like the dinosaurs! <laughs> I just don't Ow. like it. It's got nothing to do with the uh, charter. That's right, Ruthie. Rawr. We just, uh, Moss just likes chaos. Well, think about it. If, if we do this, we don't need to give them anything we find. Yes. As opposed to half or whatever. Oh, I agree. 100%. I... We're definitely going to do what we can to get that, you know, all access pass, no no payment thing. I will, I will admit the only value the actual treasure has is for either helping put an end to this curse and to also aid in the abilities that I can utilize outside of that. Yeah, but we need money. Take it or, gonna... I can take it or leave it. However, we're gonna need I also... money if we want to fund getting anywhere. Yes. I also understand that most individuals do need things like water and food. <laughs> I like the idea of the boat. Are we up for committing to a month and a half of travel? I am. 
Though. Ross is like, I get to be a pirate! <laughs> We're gonna Though... get Ross a little uh, cutlass. Yeah. If... Maybe no, a patch. Uh... If you all mind do not mind let me check something right quick would the party mind if I access just a small amount of the ones that we currently possess yeah do it what you need uh Basically, I would like to have rough, take roughly 40 gold pieces from there and put it with some money I have to purchase the materials for it. I think it's one that's going to be used initially, but I like having the extras in case, well, having the ritual find familiar in case the familiar gets smacked down. Mm. Done and done. I changed the manifest. Okay, and I'm basically Morgan. I'm getting a Basically, I'm going to get a total of 50 GP worth of that stuff, but I'll have, basically, it gives me one where I can summon one, and then, or in case something happens to it. <laughs> so How we're on board with his boat plan? Yes, we're on board with boat. Now the whole, um, setting the dinos loose. Oh, we're fine, we don't have to. We're doing that? No. I... We can just if we're gonna do it before we leave, we should probably plan that out as well. Let us actually accept this charter for if you're going to do this. But I suggest us actually accepting the charter first, bef accepting the this job first before we do it to at least flag some possibility blame falling on us. I mean, yeah. You got a point. Yep. My. Now let me take out this too. Check something real quick. <laughs> Not me frantically pulling out Ghost of Salt Marsh. Ah! It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna happen, buddy. You said a boat. <laughs> you put that out there. I did. Well, I didn't put that out there. The book put the book put that out there. Like I said, I have no clue what the fuck y'all are gonna do. So I'm just like doing the best I can. <laughs> okay. So, are you all ready to report back to the reporter, or is there more you wanted to do in the fort first? Uh, I am perfectly willing to report back in. I have a question. Is there any way for her to access the wild magic outside of her rage? I don't think so. Okay, thank you. You can rage whenever you want to, though. This is true. So, you all arrive back into the briefing room of Liara Porter. She's still exactly where she was when you all left her, going over papers and things. Before you even sit or acknowledge, she kind of looks up towards you all. So, will we be working together? Yes, we are... Much of you, we are curious about the bay on the opposite side of this island. It may be good to get a good, get a feel for a different area of this land as we continue in our quest, individual quests. She nods. Very well. The Serpent's Fury departs tomorrow. You can meet with Captain Seacaller, Lyrian Seacaller. She will be at the docks. I, so if I expect her to leave early in the morning, so it may be wise for you all to arrive at the docks tonight and introduce yourself to her crew. You will be traveling with them for quite some time. 
Her and her crew are not responsible for any of the exploratory mission out of the bay. As soon as you leave their boat, the entirety of the mission is on you. They are under, uh, they are under no obligation to assist you in any way or rescue you should you require it. Disagreed? Couple questions for you. Of course. Are you sending any of your troops alongside them? Or is this it particular, just us This particular crew does work for me, but they are not Flaming Fist soldiers. None of my soldiers will be accompanying you on this mission. How we are this way. Sorry. Oh. Well, I was going to say, uh, considering she is, is hiring us because... He lacks either the manpower or resources to commit her troops to this mission. He's going with a typical tactic of hiring us to do it instead. How do we tell the boat when we're ready to get picked up? I'll send word ahead to Captain Seacaller. She will know it. She will be likely one of the only boats at the marina. Certainly most I likely to be the only large boat. He means when we're after our exploratory mission. Captain is instructed to wait for you in the bay. She will likely have a means to contact her, whether it be a flare, a signal fire, whatever it may be. She will have a full view of the bay from her waiting position. Do you have a sending stone? I do. Could we have some rocky talkies, please? I do not have any to spare, unfortunately. The captain has one, which will be in contact with me when I have here. Oh, I th I'm sorry, I thought that was important to you. My bad. Well, it is. But I'm sure you've discovered by this point that magic items are a rather... rare find... in the Cholton Peninsulas. One of the... merchant princes, Wakonga, I believe it is, has the market cornered. Even items that are relatively common on the mainland or extremely difficult to find here. Mothrod is going to kind of like pshaw at her. I'm a magic item. <laughs> she kind of raises her eyebrow. We had heard we had heard this about we had heard this about Wakanda upon our arrival in this land. Which is why the items in our store are of exceptional value and will, or will be more than sufficient payment for any extra duties you perform during your mission. Okie dokie. Is he going to be mad at us for taking this and being gone for two months? Nah. No. No, no. He, uh, he just wants it. It's worth exploring if we do find that uh, automation that he was constructed he was hunting for. So you we all are find it. working yeah. with Wakanda. Yeah. We have... We have met him. What is your relationship with the Merchant Prince? She says as she's going through some papers. She pulls out a file that has got a drawing of Wakanda. She kind of steeples her hands in front of her and looks towards you all. He gave me food! Essentially, an individual who oh, came here. Who we were. <laughs> essentially, whenever we arrived here, one of the people who had been with us at that point knew of him and invited us to have a feast with him. Hmm. All what he has stated, all what he stated, he directed us over here, saying this would be the they'd have the least amount of trouble. Essentially, kind of gave us a lay of the land. She nods. She says. The Flaming Fist and our Lord's Lord Alliance patrons very much wish for a deepened relationship with this particular Merchant Prince for reasons that are made obvious by what I stated earlier. Is there any assistance that the Flaming Fist can provide to you in service to him? Rocky talkies. Uh, I can arrange for you to contact Wakonga before you depart, if you wish. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some guys with us either, right? Like, to help us out. Mm -hmm. uh, she nods and says... Right on. Go ahead. 
Well, but on the other hand, if it is a scouting intelligence gathering mission, there is the fact the larger of a group you have, the easier it is for whatever is affecting the area to see you. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I think we're okay. I don't think we necessarily okay. need to check in with him. Okay. You don't. You don't think we're gonna need a guide at all? Going out there. Well, we. Uh. The problem is there is no guide because there's no info yet. Yes. Yes. We're not going too deep into the jungle here. We're mostly. I'll yeah. go ahead and put you all back on the map of Chol yeah. real I was quick. Gonna so ask, can... Could we possibly get like a blank version of this? Is just a picture. Uh, unfortunately, really, like, you know, I might be able to find a player one for you, because, yeah, this one takes fucking forever to load up. Does it only load once for you guys, or does it have to load every time you come back to it? Every time. Okay, that, okay, so Wait, it's probably, really? it's probably the computer, because mine's always, mine's just once, too. Once when I load in, and then after that, it's preloaded for me. But, yeah. I would just the map. like to have one, like, side by side while we're talking and looking at different places. That is yeah. a good idea. Let me see what I can find for you all. Map. I'm, I yeah, was hoping, totally. I was hoping I could, oh, 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 oh. Hilarious. Nice. We're not necessarily planning, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Sometimes exactly. these modules really get it right, and this is one, like, nine times out of ten, I'm like, you know what, it'd be really cool if this module came with this, and I could just search the library, the, the journal, I'm like, oh, shit, it's there. Yeah, so, so like, we're not planning on going much past the coast here. Right. No, I mean, the city we're looking at is... The city we're looking at is that little dot right there. Correct, correct. So is that... Can you all... Is that big enough for you all to see, like, effectively? Like, I know you can't zoom and stuff onto it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's fine for me. Yeah. Like, okay. it's not even a full... He that little dot there is not even a full hex away. Right. So... The shoreline. Overhearing all this conversation... Uh, you obviously all haven't gotten up to talk about what you're doing with Wakanga and all this kind of stuff. So she would say, once again, that a better working relationship with Wakanga is something that the Flaming Fist desires greatly. She says that if there is a mission, whatever it may be, that the Flaming Fist can assist you with, and of course, in return, you all would inform Wakanga of their assistance. She'd be willing to send you with a small entourage of soldiers and a guide. Whatever mission is that it is that you have for her, as long as it won't take you more than a couple ten days to complete, she's more than willing to allow the Serpent to assist you on this mission, take you where you need to go, and will provide you with a small entourage of soldiers to assist you as well. Interesting offer. Or perhaps let us actually deal with this scouting mission first before we... Yeah, we can discuss that when we get back. Yes. <laughs> okay. But... It... I feel like I had another question about this little village we're going to check out but I'm forgetting what it was now we don't know what lives there we don't know what murdered the last group when did the last expedition go she doesn't need to go through her papers this time she says they departed here three weeks ago the message that we received was little less than that. So about 17 days after their departure is when they received the message. And they had a sending stone. They did. Uh, and the captain of this vessel is going to have one that connects back here as well, which is probably how she managed to hear what happened to that expedition. Um, the last ship that was sent was also sunk. This is a different ship. Yes. The captain that's taking you this time is a oh. different one than one last time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Like I the captain of each, the captain of each the captain of each ship gets a sending stone. Yes. 
and then they kind of link back up here. So that basically it's their way of having a like magical equivalent of World War Two video. Mm -hmm. Noted. Uh, well, that being settled, uh, we will depart <laughs> on the ship. Cool, maybe I'll get to bite another plesiosaur. Should. Should we maybe stock up on more rations and other things? Yeah, we've got... We yeah, we've got the day here. Yeah. Yeah. Captain, the commander would inform you all that any provisions, food, water, other generic supplies that you will require will be will be given to you free of charge. Um, you don't have to worry about food or water on the boat. That will be provided to you. But any tools that you may need, that you may think you need, within reason, she adds, you can requisition from the fort. I need a dynamicus. Thank you for that. Do you, uh, do you ask her for a Deinonychus? Moss Rod? Yes. yes. She kind joking. of raises her brow, right? She Salazar, she's not joking. Liara kind of raises her brow and she says, Return what to me successful you... with something extra. What that may be will be up to you. But if you can return to me with your scouting mission complete and... Some more interesting details about Shiku that I may not have expected. I don't see why I couldn't part with one of my beasts. I'm gonna hug her boot. She kind of, her eyes go a little bit wide, like the only no, the only, the only moment of like any sort of just non-stoic mask you see is her eyes just kind of widen a bit. She looks down at Mossrat and then looks up towards all of you like, Oh yeah, that's normal. Somebody do something about this, please. She doesn't. She says with her eyes. That just means she likes you. He usually doesn't bite. I let go, and like my eyes are just brimming with tears of pure fucking joy. <laughs> she looks confused Be and alarmed. <laughs> Be th Be thankful she had her annual bath. Before coming here. Yeah, but now I don't blend in with the with the foliage as well. Liara's eyes are just still just wide. She says, "Dismissed." <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of my mother. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, I need a whole new table of random encounters. This will be fun. <laughs> well, uh... You did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know why, I don't know why, but for some reason in my, in my head, it was far more likely that you'd go after the giants. But, I boats mean, are fun. We're tiny. Boats are fun. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get stepped on. We have three tiny. <laughs> right. The second I heard you say that, I'm like, damn, you're right. <laughs> this does we seem like the safer uh, option, doesn't it? Yeah. The real thing, the real thing, Sean, is we don't have a bag of the little black one d four fire pebbles that you gave in that one campaign. Salt and pepper. <laughs> yep. Didn't somebody eat thing. those? Yep, yep, yep there we go. Why, why am I unsurprised that it was your character ace? <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers, it's not her fault. <laughs> um, so I just need to point out that one choice was into the jungle to find the giant things that would be really easy to find. The other choice is go to the uncharted unknown town that the last group was viciously, brutally murdered in. <laughs> and the chicken <laughs> Guys, I, awesome. uh, I will admit, some of the same thinking is that also gets them farther away from the actual Flaming Fist itself. I'm just like... Potential... Yeah. And he also figures, okay, where is the most likely spot to find a clue where everyone is hunting around? 
are on the exact opposite side of the island. That is good I point. don't think it's go I don't think it's going to be that simple, but yeah. see where the character's logic is coming from. I wonder if this adventure would give you a quest hook that could be a TPK. <laughs> um, I regret to inform you all that Moss Rod identifies as a problem. <laughs> She's your problem now. I just know I have instance so whenever chaos occurs, I can just be attempting to summon a familiar. Oh no, Sean's looking at the chat. He's getting <laughs> ideas of where cracking. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, welcome. Alright. Is the ship named Petunia and Captain by Pickles? No, <laughs> unfortunately not. The ship is named the Serpent's Fury. It is Captain by Lyrian Seacaller, a half elf woman. We spent quite a long time navigating the, the waters of Chult. Awesome. But you'll be meeting with her tonight, and into the morning you will be taking off. Is there anything else you want to do with the fort in the meantime? I want to go look at the Denonicus. Okay. Are you going to go pick I mean, one no. out? Yes, I'm gonna pick one out as yeah. long as no one else has something they want to do. Like, if there's an actual like in-game thing y'all want to do, other than me be stupid. What uh, do you guys? What, do you think we'll need any additional provisions before we take off? Or, I mean, she mm -hmm. said we can have basically anything within reason, right? Indeed. A weapon. Can I have some extra arrows? Maybe I know you're not making us track, but I feel like yeah, what's they would they they would supply you with fifty arrows free of what's charge. What's good for? Oh, thank you. What's good for water stuff, guys? Like I don't, I've I'm not a water person. Yeah, same. <laughs> Sunscreen, everybody. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've still got plenty of. Insect repellent, food. I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll have to worry much about insects out on the water, but. Well, yes, but we also have to plan for the week where we're gonna actually um, be yeah, on true, the true. island. I'm, I'm thinking more like food and rations, and maybe clean drinking water. Oh yeah, like is there a filtration system we can take with us to turn salt water into fresh water? Well, they'll have water while we're at sea. We have the rain catchers, too. Right on. Sure. <laughs> Maybe some, like, arm floaties. Oh, I like floaties. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh canoe. Uh, canoe. Uh, the, the, the thing that, it's like a portable, it's a portable boat. boat. Uh, oh collapsible boats are extraordinarily expensive magical items. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the type that breaks down into a suitcase. That yeah, that's a that's a that's a big ask. Okay, okay. sorry. Mm -hmm. I doubt said, that they'd even have them here. You said that the last boat was sunk. Do we know what it was sunk by? Negative. The only information they have of the fate of the last crew was that short sending. Where? Mm. Do they know where the boat was when it went down? Uh, in the bay. Okay. I'd like to find the wreckage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I don't have anything to prep. Unless we want to actually go through with this dinosaur unleashing. <laughs> Well, now I feel kind of bad about it because they're giving us all kinds of cool stuff to go have, you know, adventures as pirates. I want a tiny cutlass. I want a tiny cutlass. Uh, sure. Sure. There are plenty of halflings and other small folk that venture to Chult often enough through Fort Valyrian that they have miniaturized scimitars that you could use. So you can just drag in a scimitar and call it a cut and rename it for a cutlass. Similar Quit. enough in design. Quit sticking your fingers down your throat. Yeah, that's not good. 
It's not what you want. No, it is not. Aiden, I can't get a swimming speed until level four. I can't turn into something and go underwater. Ugh. Oh, soon, my friend. Soon. I know. Uh, I have a Grappling hook. Yeah. I'm just gonna start yelling <laughs> items I want. Sorry. No, this is fine. Um, well, uh. Well, Asim is going to, uh. sit down near a fire somewhere and toss in one set of his little, uh. Spell components to summon himself and Al Familiar. Nice, nice. Hank, do you know who I miss? E. E. Remember E? Mm. Just body the checked the actual. Just body checked the actual spiritual thing being summoned and assumed that he was it. What's the name of your owl? I don't know yet. Okay. Alright. So are you all thoroughly provisioned? I think so. Yep. Yep. Okay. Have all the food and water I need. You're the worst. <laughs> So I got more water than any because I do have a water skin on me. In this case any of y'all need it. Oh, I would like to bring like like this little tiny goblin is walking up to the ship carrying a large like barrel of Taj or whatever it is. Taj, nice, nice, nice. Taj, nice. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, are you all departing from Fort Belurian then? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, we don't need to sabotage them. <laughs> we can't set the dinosaurs loose. One of them's mine. <laughs> Excellent point. Fantastic. Okay. She also seems pretty decent. She doesn't seem as bad as, like, some of the guys we ran into. Hmm. be fair, the Flaming Fist bar is pretty low. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I, I mean, they are the Flaming Fist. But... It's something where you get all sorts considering it's a mercenary company. Yeah. It's gonna be anyone from the highest of ideals to the absolute lowest and everything in between. There is, there is no higher purpose behind it outside of we're making a living. Right. Okay. Woo hoo, man! I love. I, I forget how much I love Ghost of Saltmarsh and all of its rant. Like the the adventures are okay, but the 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 real spot this book shines is in all of its just sea bound encounters and like ships in the sea and oh it's such it's such a great such a great book i use this i've used this so many times before and i'm excited to get to use it again anybody know how to drive a boat i would assume that the captain would yeah yes mm -hmm. but if we encounter pirates okay. i want to take their boat ah i have no clue because i'm a because I'm a being from the freaking desert. I have a question. Uh huh. If we're going to be on this boat with them for, you said, two weeks? Uh, two weeks there, two back, and one week on the shore. Can we learn? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I would like you'll solid. have plenty of downtime activities. Um, we'll use Tasha's rules for downtime. You will have a grand total of 32 days of technical downtime. So, um, 
I'm sorry, Xanathar's has a really good section on downtime. Um, we will we can learn skill proficiencies using that. I tend to use a very um, pared down version of that to make things get done faster. But yeah, spending a month on a boat. I would assume that anybody that wants to use their downtime to learn to sail would be more than able to do so. Right on. Good. Okay. Just for some clarification, uh, could my character be big more as far as like the plotting out courses? And how they're actually utilizing some of like the cartography and things like that to get proficiency with cartographers' tools. I would also say that would be allowed. Because okay, I this... have land vehicles, but I don't have yeah. water. Yeah. Okay. I just figure some general exploration, someone with cartographers' tools might be handy in the future. Absolutely. Indeed. Sean! Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs count as land vehicles? Riding one like a horse, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, cool. Or riding like a cart driven by dinosaurs. That would be land vehicles. This is the best day of my life. Okay, let's do this. God, she's going to have a chariot attached to the Denonicus. <laughs> <laughs> you love when a plan comes together. Indeed. I love when my chaos accidentally looks like a plan. That's the best part. Nice. Where did she get land vehicles? I don't even know. Hold your background. I don't remember. Hold on. I have to go look. Does a couple of the player handbook backgrounds give it. That's all I know. No, oh. she's an athlete background. Oh. How did I do this? Athlete might also give it? Maybe? Because that's like competing might be racing chariots. I don't know. We will figure this out, though. I will, I will... I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All that matters is you know how to ride a dinosaur-drawn carriage. Okay. So, you all make your way away from Fort Belurian, heading out the main gates. It is still the middle of the day, or probably closing in on evening at this point, after a full day of shopping and other such things. And you make your way to... Back to the beach and to that landing that we mentioned earlier. Let's see if I remember what that was called. Mm. Wasn't it like something Balurian? Yeah. Balurian landing or bay or something? Yeah, something like that. Balurian Bay, Balurian, Balurian Landing. Something along those lines. But yeah. So, we'll do a ride there. And as mentioned before, it is essentially just um a few standing buildings and that's really it just a few wooden buildings wooden shacks built up and um with several ships anchored out at sea anchored out a few maybe a few dozen feet away from the beach um small rowboats making their way back and forth between them uh -huh. You do see a boat out on the water. One of you, it is the only large boat out there, as advertised. Um, okay. All right. So, there are several boats making their way to and from the beach. Um, one of them seems to be going to and from the large vessel that's out there. Um, individual that makes their way onto the beach is a dwarven woman. She is wearing light armor and she is armed. She's obviously a, uh, a fighter of some kind. She's obviously a soldier or a warrior. Maybe the ship's, um, maybe the ship's, uh, security, whatever it may be. But she kind of looks up towards you all and gives you a brief nod before going back about loading up her rowboat with provisions. Hi. She looks up. Oh. Hello. Is there something we can help you all with? I believe you are expecting us. Oh, 
Um, You're Liara's scouts. Yes. Uh, yes. Wonderful. Pile on in. I'll just take back a few less cartons, and we'll make you. We'll get you onto the serpent. Uh, and, uh, so when we climb in. Okay. So, be a short row ride. The dwarven woman would introduce herself as Kethra. Kethra Iron Fist. She carries a battle axe at her side. She says, I'm the first mate aboard the Serpent. You'll be answering to Captain Lyrian. Lyrian Seacaller. Uh you spent a long time out on these waters, you'd do best to listen to her. Are you all new to Chalt, or are you seasoned adventurers of these jungles? Relatively new. I see, I see. Venturing I pretty far south for being newbies to this place. We have oh, a lot of minis. colors. She's gonna give me a dinosaur if we uh, figure this shit out. Indeed, indeed. Well, as long as our instructions remain to anchor offshore and let you all take one of the boats, then that's all fine by me. And as long as we don't got a beach like the last group did, didn't work out too well from them. From what I heard, dear gods, dear gods, we're all gonna die, was the last thing that they said. Very much like that to not be our last words. Do you have any idea of what happened? She shakes her head. She says that, she says the captain did mention something about hearing some rumors about an eruption over there, but uh, volcanoes erupt all the time around here. I doubt it would be anything, I mean, I haven't, I've never heard of lava getting up and chasing someone before. Jesus Christ. We're so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> we made a mistake. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be TPK. First, first <laughs> fight. We will see. We that together, y'all. <laughs> oh, we're in it now. So, how long have you been a pirate? Pi <coughs> pirates? We, 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 we don't be pirates. Aww. And as as you say that, uh, you bump up against the side of the boat, and a tall elven woman with dark hair and with a bow slung across her back, she says, Indeed, we ain't pirates. Anymore. Privateers is what they call us now, I believe. Welcome aboard the Serpent. Come on up. Uh, Rod is much happy. Yes. Hooray. She's gonna, like, just, like, skitter up the side of the boat. She reaches out a hand. The captain reaches out a hand to help you up. I'll take it. She says, yeah, so what do they call a pirate when they turn from pirates into pirate hunters? I've always wondered. Badasses? Well, working for the Fist seemed to be far more lucrative, so here we are. They're just land pirates, so... She nods. Not too far off the mark there, but they're the land pirates with all the men and firepower and all of the steel you could ever ask for, so... I think we call that a government. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan Lee Mulligan is so proud of you right now. <laughs> so, with that, she says, So, it's time to go ahead and get out of here. We were supposed to leave in the morning, but I heard Aramag is already met a few ships in the bay this mo this afternoon, so an early departure might uh, get us around having to deal with him. Well, you haven't met Aramag yet. Well, let's pray that you don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What is Aramag? Aramag is the longest standing resident of the Bay of Chult. Or what is it? She smiles at you, turns around, like, all right, everybody, let's get underway. Start setting everything up. 
Great. Why is everybody like this? <laughs> <laughs> this is how Sean gets us back. <laughs> I'd just like to point out, Sean, I had nothing to do with, with anything they've done in other games. <laughs> don't, don't disappoint me because of the poor choices of the game. Would I ever make a poor choice? No. Of course not. <laughs> we are making him very happy in Avernus right now. Yes, we are we on are. his good side. Go team. Oh, go team. All right. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and get you all onto your big player map. We'll stay on here for a little while so we don't got to worry about loading in and loading out over and over again. All right. So. A bow aboard. Aboard the serpent. The Serpent's Fury. Meet some of the crew. Uh, captain Seacaller is obviously the captain. You've met, um... You've met the first mate, Kethra Ironfist. There is also a human sorcerer, an older, an older man. Um, he calls himself Jax. And he says, My name used to be Jax Stormcaller, but... Sea caller sounds so much better out here, and she had it first, so I gave it up. Just call me Jax. <laughs> but yeah, there's also there's about five or six other sailors running around. Um, most of them just refer to themselves as Red. Yep. And are they cool with like newbies under underfoot learning how to do stuff? Yeah. They say as long as you're willing to grab a line and help out, they don't care what you do and who you watch. Awesome. Nice. Feats of strength from the teeny tiny goblin. <laughs> so you all see Lyrian and Kethra up near the front of the boat. They're keeping a close eye out, and they're looking back and forth between each other, and they're looking out over the bay. And you hear them say, well, you hear them talking to each other, and they look a bit concerned. Um, probably are about here on the map now. Let me see if I can get you dragged there. There you are. Still in the bay, making your way out. Do, do we know why they're concerned? Yeah. Because they're, they're concerned, I'm concerned. So if you approach, you would look, you would be able to look down over the boat and you would see a lot of activity around the boat. Um, dozens of sharks, other sea creatures, and they all look up and they say, well, it looks like you'll get to meet Aramag after all. And with that, the sea ahead roils and churns and waves rush up and crash over the bow of your ship. I need everyone to make dexterity saving throws, please. Why? Yeah. We've been on the boat for like 30 seconds. Well, Front technically row. we've been on the boat for a few hours. Okay. I have made a mistake. So, massive waves crash over the bow of the ship, ripping the feet out from under Masrat and Asim, who go sliding away towards the other side of the ship. Um, stand by. Okay, a couple of the sailors managed to catch you both before you go overboard. But what's more concerning is for those of you that can still that are still standing, can see over the over the railings as you see what's driving these waves towards you. Sawtoothed hills seem to be rising from the heaving foam of the water. Water streams off of these rising crags like rivers crashing down a mountainside, and at last, the emerging island stops growing in size. Although the sea around still tosses your ship like drifting feathers. The captain kind of looks around and says, Bring it here! And you see several soldiers begin to rush below decks and start working on something beneath the deck. 
Then, a huge blast of steam erupts from the waves, and through the drifting rainbow-crossed mist, you see an immense beak and a milky eye the size of a hog's head cast staring blindly in your direction. The water calms. You spot dozens of sharks circling the ship, circling this enormous town-sized dragon turtle that has just erupted from the waves beneath you. It says, it booms and intones in Draconic, this massive booming voice says, what offerings do you bring, Aramag? First of the Bay of Chults. You see the captain. Any of you any good with negotiation? I speak Draconic. For one sec. She kind of raises her eyebrows. She says, that's not what I asked you. I have... A negative one to charisma. So I you can stay do my back there. Same here. Yeah. I think Asim is our 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 speaker. Yeah. I'll Sorry, translate for him. Everything tried to run out the door, so we had to go chase her down. Oh. <laughs> so, the captain throws her arms out. Says, "Great Aramag, we wish simply well, to here. pass through your great gates." Uh, Hank, how much did you miss? What was the last thing you heard? Uh, giant dragon turtle wanting a offering of some sort. Indeed. So and I, the captain whips around towards you and says, "Okay, we have a chest full of gold and treasure. The trick is he's never satisfied with the first thing you give him. He has to be convinced that he's won some sort of deal against you. That he's coming out on top. That's all we have." Oh, I got this! I got this! Hold on. Masrat's gonna hop up on the railing of the deck, pound her chest a little bit, and belch up a couple pieces of gold. And hold them out. Everyone is silent. I, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Listen, then the chest of gold looks good. <laughs> Aramon says... Your offering is accepted. More. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Do I have to, like, roll to see how much I can throw up this, this gold? Make a constitution check. Okay. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I have no chills, and this is all I got. Con. How much did you swallow? Ten gold pieces. You cough up six more. On top of the two you already did. Cool. Hmm. And it's hut, hut, and then I'm like juggling them for him. So uh, there you go. The dragon turtle opens his mouth. Your offering of the gold producing goblin is accepted. Oh. Fuck. Uh, this is a one-time only trick. It starts to sink below the water. Uh. Well, if it's gonna go, I'll let it go. <laughs> the captain would rush up and be like, wait! We have more! Uh, uh hold on. Uh, first of the Bay of Chult. She, yeah. My name is... My name is a seaman. I'm from a land... Far from this one. Greetings, Asim. I demand more treasure. Or the goblin. The moment he considers it. Mm -hmm. The captain literally like jabs you with an elbow and kicks the chest sitting next to you. I'm, uh... ...does not actually have the magical ability to produce gold. She somehow mistook gold for a snack yesterday. It's true, I'm really dumb. 
Do you prefer an offering of some of some treasure that does not the stench of a, of a digestive track on it? It responds back oh. in Draconic that it will take the goblin gold and whatever else you have. Bye. Seem, uh... Give him the money. It's not our money. Yeah, uh... He, uh, offers it to the dragon, saying, well, this is, the, uh, this is what we have. Pray that it is enough. We pray that it is enough to show the benevolence enough to the benevolence that your benevolence in guarding this bay. He kind of grumbles. So you're giving him the gold that Mossrot vomited up and then just handing over the whole chest? Uh, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to try to roughly half of it, I think. Cause half the chest? He has to try to... Because no, sometimes he, you said that he has to... Uh, feel like he wants feel, something. Feel like he wants something. Indeed. Okay, so you toss over half of it. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Oh, let me go here. Well, come on, scroll down. Uh, oh my god, that's terrible. It kind of bucks in the water a little bit, sending another massive wave rolling over the ship. It says, in simply one word in Draconic, more... I'm going to try to puke up the last two pieces I got. <laughs> Make a con save. You do so, okay. Masrat. Go ahead and make good. a persuasion check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My negative one. Whee! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Use your inspiration. It's so Wait. early. Okay, fine. I'm going to use my inspiration for a 16. It intones in Draconic. Your offerings are accepted. The sharks kind of gather around the ship. They start gathering up all the gold that Mossrat threw up and the gold that got hooked over the side of the ship. Have a nice day. It returns to the waves. That the captain... Terrifying. The captain is just like wide-eyed and looking at you all. He says, remind me not to let you try that again. It worked. She looks down at the chest and she says, well, I suppose you didn't even have to give it all up either. All right, all right, well done, well done. It's always a risk riding that edge of success or disaster. That's she nods normal. and she says, I have a feeling we'll be riding that edge of bit more than usual with you all as passengers. Well, I suppose that is the reason that we were selected for this job. Does, anybody Does that have... always happen when you're leaving? It's hit or miss sometimes. That's why we left in the evening. We were hoping that he had his fill for the day, but apparently not. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, you will hit the open ocean. All right, all right. So we are back. You all have set sail from the Bay of Chult, officially made your way out of the bay, and are now out on the open ocean. You have been told that it will take no less than 16 days there and back. Or 16 days there, seven days of recon at the site of Shiku Bay, and then another 16 back. So you all have quite a bit of time to kill on your way. So let's go ahead and see what the first day has in store for you all. All right. It is a surprisingly clear day out on the ocean today. Your first day of travel goes by without any major incident get to meet the sailors. There's a lot of just, there's a lot of 
deck hands and a lot of sailors, but the three crew, the three um, command crew, consist of Captain Lyrian, first mate Kethra, and the bosun Jax. Uh, yeah, Lyrian's traveled extensively throughout the world's oceans, but has spent the last six years of her time completely focused on the waters of Chult. Um, yeah, she's a talented musician. She is always, whenever she's not actively captaining, she has her loot out and is playing a song. So we talked a little bit about you all having some downtime to work on various tasks. Um, those of you that aren't just going to spend the entire time learning a skill proficiency, what are you doing? I'm, uh... I kind of already said what I was planning on trying to do the skill proficiency thing right, if I right. can. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would like to spend some time learning the workings of the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, I guess, helping to cook with prepping meals. <laughs> nice. So I don't know if I trust him to make good food. Heading down there, the cook is a goblin. As you head down, you get the aromas of um, various wonderful aromas hitting your nose. Um, you you catch the hallmarks of a rather adept cook and are rather surprised when you turn the corner and find a Batiri goblin. Um, not just a regular goblin, but he is um, wearing his full feathered regalia and he is wearing a mask of a boar crossed with a shark. He whips around towards you and he says, You! What you doing in my kitchen? What? Just... Exploring, seeing if you needed any help, making sure the food was good. Stone Belly needs no assistance from top ciders. Do you think you could do better than me down here? Do ya? He waves a fork around at you. <laughs> I mean, there's only one way to find out. Should we uh, make a little competition of this? You, through the through the wooden mask he wears, you see his eyes go wide. You challenge Stone Belly? I do. So be it! He reaches up and rings a bell. <laughs> Dinner has been called. You have 30 minutes, challenger. And then he leaps over a counter and immediately sets to a flurry of motion as he begins cooking. I guess we're doing this. <laughs> So, let's go ahead and get a straight wisdom check from you, and then you can do whatever checks, whatever second check you find would be relevant to cooking this meal. I mean, I got. Okay, so wisdom check. Wisdom check first. No proficiency. No proficiency is just a straight wisdom check. This is to call upon your past experience. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not gonna use the sectional on this. <laughs> okay, so you are out ahead. Um, so Stone Belly is pulling out all kinds of exotic fruits and exotic meats. You see him pull what is what appears to be the left side of a Tyrannosaurus's face, and he kind of looks over towards you and like narrows his eyes and hides what he's doing. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go for some nice like meat kebabs, some nice citrus uh, salad on the side. Okay. It's supposed to be good for seafaring. Mm-hmm. Citrus, yeah, I gotta gotta fend off that scurvy. Mm. <laughs> Could I roll a like <laughs> medicine check to make this like a good, nutritious, healthy meal for uh, sure. being at sea? Yeah, it's medicine. Nice, nice. I'll take it. Okay. See what he gets. So combine those two. We're looking at what is that? 34, 39? No. Math, math is hard. 35. Thank you. Oh, poor Stone Belly's not having a good day. No, no. <laughs> All right, so 
he presents a Tyrannosaur cheek. It is expertly cooked, although your presentation is simply far better. Um, by the time everyone is done eating, um, several people are kind of walking up and congratulating you, and Stonebelly would walk up, and he would hand you... He would lower his head and hand you a fork and knife that are obviously very well used. Uh, I'll take them. You have defeated Stonebelly. Uh, well, I bring some different experiences from the mainland. But, you seem to be quite good at cooking with the local ingredients. He's about to cry. <laughs> Maybe we should work together on this. I'd you love would, to learn. Uh, you the would local teach me cooking. of your ways? You teach me yours. I want to learn how to cook Tyrannosaurus Rex. He throws himself onto his knees. Stone Belly is forever grateful. Thank you. Together we shall create foods fit for kings. Dinosaur kings. Everyone else is just really glad, right? You get you get the idea that uh, everyone just kind of puts up with Stonebelly's cooking because, you know, he's he's the cook and he's he's the best they got. <laughs> but well, they've got me for the next two weeks. Nice. <laughs> so I guess that'll be my day. Stonebelly, uh, Stonebelly can learn cooking proficiency from you, right? <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, so if you want to use this time to both help Stonebelly learn how to get better at cooking and learn how to cook with the ingredients and the stuff that is native to Cholt, we will say that whenever you complete a survival check to create rations, you will create double the amount that you would have otherwise by the end of this trip. That works for me. We will call that proficiency in Cholton cuisine. That works for me. I will <laughs> We'll find other unique ways to use that, but for what we will call that a proficiency gained in Cholton cuisine. I'm going to make the best dinosaur dishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other proficiency. <laughs> Typing it in. Click the wrong button. All right. So that is day one down. Here we go for day two. Okay. Another clear day on the waters of Cholt. So this would be, this would see you all have traveled 50 miles. So, jeez, yeah, it takes a while to get places on the boat. So just going over the cape, you all are. All right, now. Sixty-five. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Somebody please roll a d4 for me. Well, if I can get it over there. Come here, mouse. Okay. You all spot about halfway through the day. The sun is high in the sky, which makes it a bit harder to spot these creatures as they begin flying circles around you all. Let's go ahead and get passive perceptions from everybody. Um, mine is a 10. Thank you. 12. Okay. I think they have a good one. Yeah. 15? Okay. Uh, I got a 13. Okay. Alright. So, Salazar, with your 15, let's see what you see.
Okay, so a shadow eclipses the ship for a brief moment. Salazar, you were the first one to notice this, but all of you notice this pretty quickly. A set of massive wings flies overhead. Seems that la several large predatory birds have begun circling your ship. The captain notices this relatively quickly after you all do. She kind of looks around and she says, Any of you, uh, any good with animals? I can try talking to them. She says, well, if you could convince them not to attempt to eat us all, that would be nice. I guess I'll cast Speak with Animals and uh, try to talk our way out of this. Well, actually, can I cast that on somebody else? No. No, I can't. So yeah, I'll cast Speak with Animals. Okay. And then I guess just shout it up at them, ask them what they're doing here. Uh, they respond simply with food. Fresh meat for the young. There's no meat to get here. They are animals, so they don't communicate so much in words as much as they flash you brief images of each and every one of you. Hmm. How high up are they? They are at about circling at about 200 feet right now. Okay. They dive down to converse and then swoop back up as needed. I am going to hold an Eldritch Blast until they get within range. Okay. I'll yell up at them if they uh, don't leave. I'll let the little one eat them. Make an intimidation check at disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> they swoop in. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. <laughs> you could use inspiration. 14 still wouldn't be good enough. No. I'm not a very, like, intimidating little kobold. <laughs> all right. So, three of them swoop down towards you all. Let's go ahead and roll initiative, everybody. No, it's for dinner, though. <laughs> Oh. Nice roll, Banff. <laughs> Thank you. Why is everybody so much faster? Dang, all of us. All of us roll pretty good. Group it in it. All right. And... They would be swooping down, so they are much closer. Asim, your held Eldritch Blast would go off. So go ahead and send that first, okay. and then we'll get going. Okay, uh... We'll target this one that is closest, uh... To the top side of the screen. Okay. Oh, nice. Ooh. Solid hit. So, uh, swirling blast of, like, superheated air, and Sanja swirls up from his hand and smacks the thing. Okay. We're up 11 points of damage. <laughs> Got it. We're gonna have the entire crew act on Lyrian's turn. And... Okay. Moss, you are up. I would like to rage. Nice. And then, the one that's north of me, I'm going to uh, fire my uh, crossbow at it. Oh, I have to have to roll for whatever my <laughs> wild magic rage thing is. Nice. Six is. I'm sorry, I'm getting there. No worries. Surrounded by multicolor pr protective lights, I get a plus one to my AC, and anyone within ten feet of me gets the same. So <laughs> anyone within ten feet of me gets a plus one to their AC. Um, nice. Um, so that's a seam. You're a walking disco ball. Yeah. I am. 
Uh, and you guys same you and some of the... Get within 10 feet, you get it. Okay, so yeah, Asim, Captain Lyrian, and the two deckhands. Right on. Nice. Does a 12 hit it, by the way? Does not. Oh, okay. Well. Go ahead, Bant. Do we have those uh, silver arrows, too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, how high up are these things? They are swooping down. We will call them 30 feet up currently. I guess I will just hold an action. Okay. One gets within my range. Okay. All right, the seam. My team's just going to. Fire again. 16 hits. Uh, okay. Uh, for three force damage. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's taking it on our just rolled a one. Okay, Oof. good. Yep. <laughs> Terrible roll, but still. <laughs> All right. Brings us to the crew. Captain is going to focus on steering the ship and keeping you away from shore. And this guy is going to reach up and he is going to cast Firebolt at the closest bird and miss. The dwarven woman with the battle axe is doing much the same as Banth, and she's just getting ready for anyone to get close. Brings us to the eagles. All right. Salazar, would you like to roll the 50-50 to see if it attacks you or the deckhand? You will be one, sure. deckhand will be two. Uh, all right. I had a d4. All right. That's me. Oh, so that's you. Yeah, you would be one and two if you're rolling a d4. All yeah. right. It dives down towards you, Salazar, and uh... lands on the deck directly in front of you, <laughs> rears up, and first with its talons as it lunges down towards you. That is only an eight to hit. That will miss. As it slams into the deck, talons first, crunching onto the wood, it rears around and leans in with its beak. That is a 21 to hit. That will definitely hit. Eight piercing damage as it takes that nice big chunk out of your flank. Oh. Brings us to the next eagle, who is going to do the same thing, dive straight down. Banth, your attack goes off. Okay, so I'm attack with right here. 13 just hits. Uh, he is, Salazar's unfortunately 10 feet away from him. Uh, yeah. All right. uh, six, six piercing, all right. It is then going to attempt to rake you across the chest with its talons. 17 to hit band. Talons attack is, oof, huge damage. 12 slashing to band. Then okay. the beak. The beak is a 14 to hit. That misses. All right, Salazar. I don't like any of this. I don't like being this close. Um, I think we're going to pop out Sizzle as an action. Okay. Right between the two of them. Okay. So that is damage when he comes out. I believe it's can be a deck save. Just get to the future. To both of them, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, deck save. Or DC and damage. Uh, DC is going to be 13. Okay. And the damage is going to be 4 damage. Half on success or none? Um, none on success. 
They both succeed. All right. And then as a bonus action, we'll command him to get us the hell away from <laughs> these things. Which will be another fiery teleportation. Okay. Um, another set of deck saves. Um, no damage on success. Same thing, DC 13. Okay. And then we're just gonna... They both succeed again. That's fine. That will be our turn. Final Giant Eagle. And he has three targets, luckily none of which are you all. That is going straight for the mage, straight for Jax. It dives down, like crashes onto the deck right in front of all these people, and immediately talons at Jax, the mage. 20 to hit does hit Jax. He suffers 10 slashing. And then it attempts to eat him with its beak. A 19. <laughs> Jax is not having a good day for five more piercing. Okay. Go ahead. Is it, my, wait, it is. Turn, yep. Okay. We are to Moss Rod. Moss is going to try to help. Uh, my little disco ball is going to run in and stab at it with the, her glaive. 19 hits. For nine points, very nice. I'm assuming you got a little bit closer, right, Moss? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm all up in its face at this point. Like. Okay, so oh, this this is a railing, so you would have had to go this way. You can get there just fine. Just your pathing would be a little different. You can use 20 feet of your movement. Okay. I don't know why I was picturing her pole vaulting with the. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's fine. She ran up. And then she, um, stabbed. Okay. Nice. All right. Banth, you're up. Okay, I'm going to use a bonus action to disengage. Okay. And move here and hold my action. Oh, uh, what's... Go ahead. Sorry, until this one gets... Uh, they stayed on the deck. They did not fly away. Okay. Um, I guess I'll pick up with a rapier again. Okay. So you wouldn't have had to disengage if that's where you're staying. Twelve is no good, unfortunately. Anything else? You could disengage and run away if you wanted to. Yeah, I will do that then. Okay. I will stand right there. Okay. Asim. Uh, I'm going to uh, cast a spell, essentially just a reflavored shatter spell. Okay. Nice, right nice. Between these two things where it's hitting both of them. Okay. Uh, is it possible for me to make sure I'm not hitting like the uh, Absolutely. master or anything put it on the ship? Okay. Yep. Okay, so let's fire this bad boy up. See, 12 con save for 17. Very nice. One fail, one success. Okay, the failure takes full damage, the success. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, that is going to be his action. Okay. And he's just to kind of wait and see what happens next. All right. Brings us back to the crew, who are going to do their best to save their deck wizard. Captain Lyrian. Produces a scimitar and begins a swinging away with a hit and a hit. And that does drop the bird. Jax is going to back out and do another firebolt at the 
eagle here. Fourteen does hit for only one fire, though. And Kethra gets to here and takes a defensive posture, defending her captain and her crewmates. Alright, this big burb has three attack options. Let's see who it goes for. That's you, Salazar. <laughs> Getting the short end of the stick for sure. Okay, Oof. it lashes out with its talons. It's a 14 to hit. Um, that will miss. Then with the beak, 13 also misses. The other burb... Going to step up, and it has a couple attack options. Does attack Salazar. Oh, Asim, you would have been too there. Asim, it doesn't go after you. So... Asim, the Talons is a 12 to hit. I assume a 12 misses. 12 does miss, okay. Yeah. Followed by the Beak. That's an 18. Uh, who's it aiming at? You, Asim. Uh, an 18 will hit. For 8 piercing. Brings us to Salazar. Okay. Uh... We are going to let out a upcasted burning hands on both of these birds. Herb, okay. Because they've got me cornered here. That's going to be DC 13, deck save. Okay, yeah, you can definitely hit those two without hitting your friends. So... It can go through Sizzle. He's fire. He's fire. <laughs> right. Deck save! DC 13 against 13. Very cool. Half on success. They both fail. <laughs> Having barbecue tonight. Right? <laughs> and then as a bonus action, we'll just have Sizzle throw a flame seed at this last bird. Nice. 14 right, hits. Five, five makes another crispy chicken. Nice <laughs> burn, man. Oh. All right. Playing with spells is fun. I don't play casters very often. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And with that, we are out of combat. And the rest of the day goes by without any major incident. Okay. All right, all right. Make some nice uh, barbecue eagle for dinner. Indeed. Enjoy the open ocean. Eagle turkey. <laughs> Okay. Good job, guys. I was really terrified they were going to pick up one of us to just fly away. <laughs> Next time. No, I was no. thinking it was going to I thought I was thinking it was going to be Ace's nightmare. Some Quetzalcoatl landing there. Oh, God, it was not. I would have had to 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 tap out or throw an X up, Sean. Those things <laughs> give me absolute terror nightmares. What thing? What is it? Uh, you know the giant flying pterosaurs like the Quetzalcoatls? Ones that are giraffe-sized but could fly. Oh, like like pterodactyls and stuff? But they're pointy all over. Oh, no, no, the, the, the real big no, ones. No, 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 no. The real big ones. They're as big as giraffes, Sean. Okay. And their whole head is their body. Like, it, no. Okay. There are pterosaurs in this game, so if anything yeah, does I'm does become an issue, no, just let me know. <laughs> them specifically. Okay. All right, everybody. So another day, another fifty miles along the coast of Chultz. Let's go ahead and see what happens on the next day. Mm hmm. I don't like that. Okay. His response was bad.
Oh, oh. Just a little too interesting. <laughs> this is all this is all very new for me. This is actually I actually haven't done the um the full blown um the full blown random sea encounters since Aetherwind, so it's been a long time. Uh we did get spells and everything back since Yes, the, the day right? has progressed to the next day. This is a brand new day for you all, so you all have had a long rest. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I don't is how they walked on the ground. But then no, the that is that, okay. I get no. it. That is un, that is unacceptable. That's awful. God, that's it could. Awful. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll I'll not talk. Yes, that is awful. I hate it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Nineteen. Oh no. Okay. Stop saying things. Stop saying things. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to switch some spells out for being seafaring, given that lesson we just had. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not a terrible idea at all. The weather begins to pick up rather intensely. Uh, that's fine. I would like to attack recklessly. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh. Okay. All right, everybody. So, the captain looks concerned. She begins shouting orders around, looks around towards any all of you, and she asks, "Do any of you also, do any of you know how to handle yourselves on a sit on a ship in storm?" This is my first time. Yeah, not not. I think we're about can, to learn. Can do what I can, though. All right. Well, whatever assistance you can provide will be more than helpful. My crew will do the best we can, but I, well, I've seen a couple storms bigger than this in my time. Not many, but a couple. Good luck. I made the gods smile upon you. And then she takes off and rushes to her station and begins to work. Okay. I need each of you to make a check that you find appropriate. Uh, tell me what you think it would be. So for some example checks, we have um, the captain is going to make an intelligence check. The first mate will be making a charisma check. The bosun will be making a strength check. The quartermaster a wisdom check for various different things that they're doing on the boats. Um, the four of you just need to come up with whatever you're doing to help. Athletics? Okay. Go ahead and roll, everybody. Whatever, uh, whatever it is. So, whatever you think would be appropriate, just describe to me what you're doing to help in this storm, and I'll and you can and then you can roll, one d twenty. Uh, rot would be like helping tie things down mm. and bank on ropes. I'm pretty sure that would be That's athletics. Important. Okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, feel free to use my session for that one. Thank you. Twenty-two is a good number. <laughs> 22. Okay. Uh, Who's I'm... next? I'm going to be trying to, like, anticipate when the actual, like, uh, and start shifting and stuff like that to try to adjust ourselves accordingly. I don't know what sort of check would be good there. Okay. Yeah. Remember, has stuff got it so much? Well, I'll just do it in general athletics because that's what most of the stuff on the ship is. But has stuff got it so much stuff, so at least can toss a plus of 1d4. So let's check and see what this does. Uh, an 11. Let's hope it's a 3 or 4. Yeah, 14. Could have been worse. <laughs> okay. I think Bant would be like. Just like climbing up the sail and help him with the rope up here, and then like 
swooping down, gliding down to another robe. So, like, acrobatics. Acrobatics! Nice. So, 13? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll use my... 25, fantastic. And what is Salazar up to? Um, can he help with the, uh, captain trying to read the winds and... Yes. I guess, like, pick out how to avoid the storm somewhat? So that would be intelligence, water vehicles, or, uh, I would say wisdom survival would also be appropriate. Uh, Alright, I was hoping for, like, a survival. Survival, yeah. I will also use my inspiration. All right, let's get the average here. <clears throat> so we have 57 from the crew, plus... Masra, did you take your 22? Yes. And Asim, are we looking at an 11 or a 16? Uh, we're looking at an 11 plus 3 due to guidance that I've talked about. Got it, so 14. So. Plus a 25, a crit success, and plus a 24. I think you'll all be okay. Very nice. So it's a rough storm, everybody. You do get rocked around quite a bit some things go over uh, a couple sailors almost go over the sides but you're able to protect them keep them from going over and after a rough day of travel the ship does survive unscathed the storm continues in this manner for a while before finally subsiding and leaving you all to open oceans once again Not I'm glad bad. We all, I'm glad we all rolled, you know, considerably well. Right? That certainly could have been bad. Okay. Here we go again. Your next day goes by without any major incident. Any time, so on these days when we're when we're hex crawling and we're really just doing travel time, a lot of times the days are going to go by without any major incident. If at any point you all want to stop and say, "Hey, I'd like to do this during a quiet day," just let me know. Going on to the next day we are. Okay. We have another day without any major incident. halfway through your day. Um, what would y'all be doing? On an average day after a couple days without event, um, hanging out on the boat, what would y'all be doing? Um, is it possible to be learning how to navigate by like, like I guess how they navigate, compass or sun or whatever? Yeah, so you want to be learning, um, you want to be learning uh, vehicle proficiency water vehicles? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So each of you can learn one proficiency during this trip. As long as it pertains to something that can be learned while you're on the boat, observing sailors, helping them, um, all that good stuff. So whatever proficiency you all would like to gain from this mission, from this, you are more than welcome to do. Um, you will gain it at the end. At your return to Fort Pelurian is when you will gain that proficiency. Right on. Okay. Okay. So... So, following the ship closely behind, it seems to be it seems to be kind of following the kitchen scrap leftovers, is one orca, a killer whale. Um, it is enormous. You can tell that it's been well fed out here on in the in these in these tropical waters. It's doing quite well for itself. Um, follows the boat pretty closely. You can see um, you can see uh, Stone Belly near the back of the ship. His eyes are wide, and his he's like kind of drooling a little bit, and he's 
got his hands together. It's like, oh, if we could only capture a beast like that, what a meal it would make. Mm -hmm. But they're so smart. Says, kind of asshole. I love them. He turns towards you. Something smart's not a good reason to not eat it. I, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> point. <laughs> point made. <laughs> Clearly, these venti uh, goblins are very different from the goblins where I'm from. <laughs> All right. So if you all decide to let the orca go along its along its merry way, then we are then the rest of the day does go by with that incident. Okay. I okay. necessarily want to get kidnapped by an orca trying to capture it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get you all another fifty miles southward. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Of course. So I have a poisoner's kit. If yeah. I if I wanted to spend my time maybe like figuring out certain poisons I could add to like arrows or something. Absolutely. Would... Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we've done we've done quite a bit of work with poisons in one of my other games. So luckily, this is something that I've had some recent experience with. Um, there is a list of poisons in the dungeon master's guide. Let me see if I can find that list for you. The way this works is, do you have proficiency in um, any pro any tools that would help you in this task? Or is that what you're trying to learn, is the tool proficiency for a Poisoner's Kit? Yeah. Yeah. Basically that. Like, okay. just something, I don't know, I'm thinking, like, if I can learn anything to help me maybe make... You know, like a salve or a poison that I could add to arrows and increase damage, maybe. Okay. So. This real quick. Okay. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make healing salves or are you trying to make poisons? Poisons. Can, poisons, okay. So, essentially what we would do is we would... Hmm. The problem that I'm running into with letting you learn Poisoner's Kit... Because you don't have proficiency in Poisoner's Kit yet, right? I have I have a Poisoner's Kit, so oh. I'm assuming I would. Okay, and that came from your class or your background? Uh, yes. Okay, which one, class or background? Mm, I think it's my background. Okay. And what was that background? Let me check. Yeah, yeah. Criminal. <clears throat> okay. I believe that's what it was, criminal. Okay. So you are proficient with the Poisoner's Kit. So in yes. that case, there would be no checks. You already know how to use it. You're already familiar with the tools and the tools of the trade. So what we will do instead is you can spend the time aboard this boat to make poisons. Awesome. The way that I go about doing this is the more dangerous the poison is, in other words, the more useful the poison is, the more difficult it is to make, obviously. The other part to that is the more effective, the more dangerous, deadly, effective the poison is, the worse the consequences are if you fail at trying to make it. Okay. And I'll just put it this way. A general failure is that you suffer the effects of the poison. If you critically fail, as in you fail your check by 10 or more, you are. it is going to be considerably worse. So just be wary of that when you decide what kind of poisons you would like to make. Okay. And there, you said there's a list? There is. Let me see if I can find it for you. Poisons in the DMG. Poisons, contact, ingested, inhaled, injury, perfect. Okay, can I share this to you? Fantastic. Here you go. Awesome, thank you. Yep. There's a lot of stuff there. And these are the common poisons known throughout Faerun. You can make any of these. However, 
Some of them, for example, the purple worm poison, would be catastrophic if you failed. As in, you, it could just outright kill you if you failed to make that. Okay. Um, other ones, like Assassin's Blood, are relatively trivial to make. The worst case scenario would be that you're affected by your own poison. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take a look through that. Yep. We'll say that you can... It'll depend on what kind of dose you're trying to make. Because if you're trying to make the Assassin's Blood, then you could make several doses in the time that you have between here and Port Nine Zaru. If you're trying to make something more complex, then um, it would be a little bit. It would be a little bit more. It would be a um, resource gathering expedition. In other words, you wouldn't really be able to gather the resources needed until Shiku, until you get until you make landfall, and then you'd have to try and find the resources to make it, all that kind of stuff. So it really just depends on what kind of poison you're going to try to make. I'm, I'm thinking like a, one of the contacts, so either carrion crawler mucus or oil of tagit. Okay. Okay. I'll take like a look at both oil, of those. Okay. Oil of tagit looks uh, pretty good. Okay. A creature subjected to this poison must succeed on a DC 13 con saving throw or become poisoned. Poison creature is unconscious. Wakes up if it takes damage, so just knock him out. Cool, cool, cool. A contact poison that's a knockout. Even better. Okay. I'm thinking coma is the critical fail for that. <laughs> Not a long one. It's like a week. A, a really good nap. A really good nap, yeah. Put this giant eagle away real quick. All right, so for the most part, the rest of this day of travel does go by without any major incident. However, about maybe two or three hours after you've all woken for the morning, sun is still hanging low in the sky, and you all see a trio of ships approaching you from the south. Captain looks unconcerned by this. They are heading straight for you. All you can make out is their shapes on the horizon at the moment. How do you all respond to this? Can we draw the captain's attention to them? Uh, sure. How do you do that? Hey, captain. There are some blobs heading straight for us. So, yes, we are getting pretty close to uh, Jahaka Bay. I was wondering when we might run across them. It's not an issue. Across who? I'm sure you've heard of Cholt's pirate problems. Right. Yes, of course. Well, Chahaka Bay is where most of these brigands hail from. And you're not concerned because you're better than they are, right? She smiles at you. She says, well, even though I do consider myself quite the seafarer, I doubt I could take three ships. No, we have a special arrangement. And she gestures back. Jax, raise the Baldur's Gate standard. And he heads back and raises up a flag that has the insignia of Baldur's Gate with the background of the Flaming Fist. As soon as she raises it, you begin to see the other three ships coming into view. They are flying black flags. As soon as they get within visual range of your ship, all three ships lower their flags and break off, heading into different directions. Can I get one of those flags? She looks towards you and says, I'm afraid we don't just hand these out. You see, the Flaming Fist has an arrangement. These particular brigands don't intercept anything bound for or bearing the standard of Baldur's Gate. Is there a reason why Baldur's Gate, or...? She kind of narrows her eyes a bit. There's a special arrangement with the Fist and these individuals. It's really oh, not right. my place to say more. 
And the fist is from Baldur's Gate, isn't it? Yes. Aha. What was that? Oh, thank you. Oh, my bad. Organizing. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. Here we go. The rest of that day does go by with that incident, bringing us to the next day, which isn't so uneventful. Let's see what happens. I love that I don't even know what's going to happen. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. Can I ask one question? Mm-hmm. Uh, how closely guarded are the Baldur's Gate flags? Uh, the there's only one of them in there, but it is not guarded. It's just in a box behind the steering wheel. I'm just going to, um, like, give Banff eyes, like, if he could read my mind, I'd be saying, before we get off the ship, that box comes with us. Or at least the stuff inside it. Are you, like, the flag itself? Yeah, or the flag like, itself. Okay. Like, not till we leave. We might need it again, but... <laughs> okay. That would be handy to have. So, like, use my rogue powers to... Exactly. Alright. Okay. So, about halfway through your next day of travel, you all do cross another ship. This one is, is intentionally keeping a wide berth from you. It flies the flag of Waterdeep as it sails northward away from Chultz. You see Captain, you see the Captain kind of leaning back and she shakes her head. It's, it's a shame. Very unlikely they make it past those three we passed yesterday. Could we warn them? She says, Jax? Jax kind of shrugs, he says, they're out of range of any of my abilities. She looks towards you, she says, I'm open to suggestions. Hmm. Uh, I have a rather... How fast is that other ship traveling? Um, these, the sailing ships don't travel fast. They only travel at two miles per hour. Okay. Uh, Asima scribbles a note has it is familiar and has this familiar fly across to them to drop it off. Okay. Acceptable. Thank you. All right. So your familiar heads over there and returns, confirming that it received the message. A brief moment later, a small fiery blast erupts from the top of the ship. It's a flare. It's not a flare, but it's a firebolt cast into the sky, which acts as a flare. And she nods. The captain looks over towards you, Moss, and says, You likely just saved some lives, you all, all of you. You should be proud of that. I mean, yeah. She says, Not all the pirates that maraud in these waters are murderers, but when I say not all of them are, that, of course, implies that some of them are. A few of them I've worked with. Some of them, I hope to never meet again, but. There's a difference behind someone attempting to make a living and someone who engages in it for the pleasure of kid killing. She nods and says, Jahaka Bay has no shortage of those, I'm afraid. All right. And with that, there is one fucking tile up here in the water, and I don't know how it got there or where it came from, and it's bothering me. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that an island or something? No, it's, it's just it's just a tile that got. It must have. I must have grabbed it and dragged it somewhere by from somewhere by accident. But I don't see is any place that's like, like obviously missing a tile. No, we got mountains right there. Oh. Uh huh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see any place where one tile looks like it got pulled from. We're going to spend the rest of the hour looking for the uh, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, you know, I, I saw that too. I think it's got to be right there, right? 
Who We're pinged that? We're gonna say yes. <laughs> Somebody pinged that just now, right? right? That was me. Okay, yeah, that looks right. I like that. That that, that feels right. Okay. <laughs> right there, maybe. Okay, here we go for another day. Ooh. Just all these mountains are called Sky Lizard Mountains. I wonder why. <laughs> Oh my god. Ace's favorite place. Wait, why? Ace's favorite place, Sky Lizard Mountain. Okay. That's where all the pterosaurs and quince oh, are at. What? <laughs> right. Okay. This is oh, a hazard. How far we are. Okay. Yeah, we're actually making pretty good time. Mm hmm. Because so we have... we're such skillful adventurers. Yes. Oh no. Yes, we are just so good at this. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, oh no, what? <laughs> okay, so. Near the evening of this day of travel, you all have made it quite a considerable distance. You're about to cross into Jahaka Bay. You hear an argument coming from below decks. A few of the sailors as they're passing by Jahaka Bay. Let's get perception checks from the four of you. Perception? Come on, Moss. Uh, ooh, I've already used my... I already gave away my... Bill. That's I'm sorry. Terrible. No, that's fine. Yeah, I we burned it all on that storm. Yeah. Uh, I think we're waiting for Bant, the perception check. Sorry, no worries. Sorry. Okay, so highest roll being a twelve. You all hear commotion coming from below decks. There is a lot of loud shouting, a lot of argumentation happening below decks. You hear the captain shouting and you hear the main thing you hear is her saying we left that life behind a fight breaks out below decks uh how do y'all respond to this can we go help her yeah i think we I need can... to make sure the captain's okay here i can tell you well i think you know how seam is going to deal with this he just uh, calmly closes the little book, the both, both his little kind of spell book and his little lore book he has on him. Calmly puts it away. Opens up the door, looks in there, and uh, you look just, into the uh, room just in time to see a man yell. Well, I challenge for command! A huge, burly man towers over the captain. And then you watch Jax step out and say, Over my dead body! And he reaches out and places a hand on the man's chest, and you see his chest explode outward. The man Jax just murdered looks surprised as he looks at the hole in his chest. Looks up. Looks over at the captain. Looks absolutely horrified the man collapses the crew erupts in rage you hear a bunch of people shouting hang him he broke the code to the rafters with him and that is what's going on there is a massive commotion a bunch of people are grabbing at Jax others are punching people that are grabbing at Jax defending his actions it's pure bedlam and you can tell that the captain is stunned she does not know how to respond to this, and it's, she's not reacting very quickly to the problem. What do y'all do? Let's do this, guys. Uh. Seem. Ducks in a deep breath. And just yells at the absolute top of his lungs. Enough. And. 
baits out of a former dread thing he has, so he starts looking mm. all undead and mummy like. And uh, essentially, he is rolling for to get everyone to listen to him doing an intimidation. Yeah, thing. let's do it. At advantage and, with uh, your dread, former dread. So we're going to do an intimidation, and we're going to utilize. I think a 21 will be sufficient. <laughs> the crew immediately stops. And they all turn towards you. A few people just stepping back. You can see a couple of them reaching shaky hands towards weapons. You have everyone's attention. He just very coldly says, I am here on a very specific mission. And if any of you exceptionally short-lived fragile and frail individuals truly desire to truly desire to interfere with it make it where the one who has who's who has my heart and whose heart i have in turn suffers and dies from this curse plaguing the land because of foolishness i will do all within my power to sink this vessel below the ways myself and just walk back to my homeland as I can survive being at the bottom of the ocean. So the crew is oh. visibly shaken by this display. They're kind of taking a couple steps back from you and at this point the captain regathers her composure. She says, he's right! We have a job to do. We've already been paid for it. The code demands that we fulfill it to the best of our abilities. What happened to James here is regrettable. And you hear a couple people shout back at the captain. He broke the code! He interfered with the duel! And the captain shouts back, I had not accepted a duel yet, so no codes were broken. Regardless of if I may have or may have not, Jax acted in defense of his captain before any formal agreement had been made. Release him, or we'll let him deal with you all. She gestures towards you, Asim. My thoughts had formed if I just uh, turning back to his more normal human looking self. Last thing to shit, turn back being his eyes as he blinks. Just apologies for interfering, Captain. I just heard a unfortunate disturbance and was driving to help. Ladies she and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That crew unrest had a DC 20 to break uh, down. I was, well, I was going to fire up that knowledge from a past life thing to toss a D6 on top of it if I needed to, but I was yeah. like... I think a 21 is going to work. <laughs> yeah, 21 is good. 21 is real good. This That had the potential to break down into a full-blown mutiny, so that was real, real well done. All right. So, Mossrod is not going to use your robes as a tissue anymore. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so later that night, the captain would approach you and she would thank you for your help back there. She said that she is not sure if she would have been able to quiet that down. She says that she's going to deal with Jax. He was out of line and he did. You can see her about to say murder, but she stops herself. She says he's a little overprotective. I don't think James's death was necessary. There's nothing we can do about that now. If you ever find yourself in need of permanent gainful employment, there's a spot for you on the Serpent. Find ourselves in need of a good bosun. Oh. As much as I appreciate the offer, I can truly tell you my heart is utterly upon the waves. She nods. Thanks you again, and heads back to her duties. Bringing us to the next day of travel at sea. Oh, wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I like I like this hex crawl, this hex crawling thing. I was I was worried that it was gonna take too long, but we're looking like we're gonna we're gonna make it to the Shiku Bay in only about an hour of gameplay, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's actually like nice. Um Especially since we're doing crossing the entire map essentially. Yeah. Getting to an entirely new location. Another day without incident. Ooh, we're near the Kobo Mountains. Hmm. Right? Is that where I can buy my onesie? <laughs> Ooh, we could make onesies on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we know that those are the Cobalt Mountains? Like, does the map have that on it? It does. Look? It does indeed. I feel like we're, like, leaning on the rail, like, looking to, to see what we can see. Oh, definitely. Nice. So, you would see volcanic eruptions. Not enormous ones, but they're not uncommon. Lava flows dot the seaside of the mountain pretty regularly. And you see quite a bit of smoke rising from the peaks of multiple locations. I bet there's a dragon inside those mountains. Is that where you're from? Uh, I'm not from these mountains. Oh. But I'm definitely very interested. She's looking on the mountain for, uh, I'm looking on the map for, uh, one mountain. <laughs> For what? For, for some goblin mountain. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cratches out, Sandratch. Rides to goblin. <laughs> well, Miles, I suppose if you're the first one to climb one of the mountains you encounter, you can call it the Goblin Mountain. Oh god, yes. there's a place called Snapping Turtle Bay. Snapping Turtle awesome. Bay. <laughs> Oh, we should bring them back to the dragon turtle. Bring a pet back? Yes. Here is your gift, a baby you. <laughs> we need to make friends with this dragon turtle. I agree. Alrighty, folks. Another day of travel, and this time in the dead of night. Another enormous ocean so storm surge hits you all. Let's go ahead and get another set of group checks to determine the results of this storm. Okay. Bye, Moss. Okay, the crew did not. The crew. Some of the crew is having a rough time of this one. Uh, I'm going to assume I've used guidance and. I'll assume I'm doing something acrobatic because that's a touch better. You can see how severe the storm is. Okay, 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 okay. And. Plus knowledge from a past life for a d6. Try to help mitigate a few low rolls. Can I do an enhance ability as part of this check? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's get everyone's totals. Let's start with Moss. Is that a five? That is a five. Banth, 13? Yes, 13. Asim, uh, 19? Stack, I stuck the deck. I used both uh, guidance and one of my knowledge from a past life things. Okay. Do a three and a, add a three and a six to that. So 22, 25. Mm. Okay. Yep. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Plus 16. Oh, oh, oh. the crew, the crew and Mossford almost tanked y'all, but yeah, you do pull through on the other side. Yeah, that's why I, I used some of that. I was like, Oof, let's uh. <laughs> Had the numbers a bit. <laughs> right? I think we're all terrified of what happens if we don't do well on these. Oh, you're... Ooh. <laughs> That'll be an interesting several sessions. Guys, he said several sessions if we fail. 
Several. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do y'all think you would get back if the, if the serpent gets broke? If the serpent crashes? Well, I oh recommended a portable boat, but no. Okay, when you when you come across the, the 10,000 gold you'll need to buy one, just let me know. <laughs> oh, my my joy makes her upset, I see. <laughs> okay, so you all are almost there. Hanging out on the boat, doing some fishing. Nice, nice. One more day of travel until you enter the bay. Okay. And is the orca still following us? No, it would have it would have departed after um, a few hours of following you guys around. Okay. I feel like she would have tried to, like, befriend a shark. Like, like I know how super this Like, feed, like, the sea critters. Okay. Um, well, there's only, like, part of the encounters that we were rolling for are random critters approaching okay. you. So not many not many came up to you, especially not any that you could see. Um, okay. Go ahead and make an animal handling check, and we'll see if you, if you manage to spot any that were laying low or just any that kind of approached without uh, too much yeah. specific intent. Yeah. Unfortunately, not Marasarat, but the, you know there is always the return trip as well, um, it's all good. for you to just... find dolphins and sharks and orcas. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, but with that, you all do arrive in the mouth of Shiku Bay. You can see lava is still erupting from a volcano. As you all sail into the bay, it becomes very obvious what happened to the city of Shiko, of Shiku as lava flows like a glowing river down from the mountain through the center of the city and into the bay. As you all look out over this, you see strange shapes moving about the smoke of the city. And we're going to stop here for today, and when we come back next week, you all can take a look at Shiku Bay and see just what killed this town. <laughs>